Mandarin Gobi Inside a Polished Bottle Acrylic Painting Tutorial by Hot Pink Zebra Paper. Hi everyone! So in today's video I'm going to be showing you another one of my polished bottle and fish paintings. And with that there's also going to be a giveaway involved and as well as a little announcement. So the announcement is that I now have prints available of four paintings. And you guys have actually only seen one of the four so far, so that's kind of interesting too. So the other four, I've got three polished bottle and fish paintings that have been done. And so this, you're going to see the second one today. And then the third one, I'll announce the giveaway winner next week, so next Sunday. So that's just the fun little thing that I, that's part of the announcement. And so the prints I have available are those three polished bottle fish paintings, as well as... I have these prints available that are peacocks because I know that after I uploaded my peacock painting last February, I think it was, uh, so many people loved that one. So I also, I've done a smaller one that was commissioned for a friend that I decided that I would also have prints available for. So that's this. So that's the one. And then I'll show you the other prints and then I'll give you the giveaway information. So here, I'll do them in order. So here is the one the original polished bottle and fish painting that I did that there's prints available of this guy here. So this one, this is a pink background with a beta fish. Then the next one, the one that you'll be seeing the painting of today is the one that I'm giving away. And I'm doing these in the order that I painted them too, just a little fun fact there. This one, that little fishy, he's a mandarin goby. They're so beautiful. So that's the painting that you'll be seeing today is this guy. And that one is like a like a dusty teal color background and then the last one the one that I'll be uploading next Sunday along with announcing the giveaway winner is this one that is a purple background with some sunburst and theus in it so there's two there's actually two fishes in this one so these are the prints that I now have available so if you're interested in those go to the description box in the top link you'll find information on how to purchase those if you're within the United States if you are outside of the United States just shoot me an email or a Facebook message or something like that or Instagram anything like that get in contact with me and we can talk and get any information that you need so for the giveaway the rules are that you have to be a US resident that is for shipping purposes I can ship without I'm outside the United States but it's kind of a it's a little bit more work so just for the giveaway I'm gonna stick to the United States and then um, the other rules are that you have to be subscribed to this channel so if you're subscribed to my polish channel fantastic I love that but you also have to be subscribed to this one too so those are basically the rules oh the other thing this one is also important you have to comment below so you can comment with anything how about we make it your favorite kind of fish that works out really well it's, it's appropriate just comment with your favorite kind of fish and then you'll be entered to win and the one that I'm giving away is the mandarin gobi that teal colored background that's the print I'll be giving away I'm um, in this little giveaway that I'm doing so I'm really excited to do this and I will get on with the video and show you the mandarin gobi and polished bottle fish painting I really loved, I just want to say this quick, really loved making all three of these polished bottle and fish paintings. I absolutely love nail polish, obviously as a nail tech, and then incorporating two things together like fish and a nail polish bottle, that kind of surrealism is definitely my favorite topic to paint. So I just wanted to mention that I thoroughly enjoyed making these and I'm glad so many of you like them too. So I'm going to be starting by painting the background, the painting's already sketched out, with a really pretty sort of a muted dark aqua teal color. Well, that's a lot of description for the color. Anyways, I'm going to start by painting that, and after that has nice two coats on it, then I'm going to be blending out the white and the black for the rings of reflection that glass creates on the table or whatever surface this is sitting on. So I'm just going to start by adding a ring of white and then a ring of black around that. Glass creates these rings of color on the surface that it's sitting on. And then with a color that is slightly lighter than the background color, but that same teal, I just blended in some white to lighten it up. I'm going to be painting the inside of the polished bottle, not over the fish and not over the brush, but everything else. So I'm just gonna be filling that in. And for all three of these paintings in the series, they're all a different color, they all have a different kind of fish and they all are a different color. So they are a different shape of bottle. So this bottle is more of like a square, a square polished bottle. The first one was an oval and then the next one is like a soft triangle. Um, then for the plastic part of the brush, you're going to want to fill that in with the original darker color of teal, the same as the background, and then fill in the brush with black. So then after I've got all of that on there, I'm going to start doing the details to the brush itself. So then with a medium gray, I'm going to be adding the little wire piece that holds the bristles of the brush inside the plastic handle part. And then I'm going to be using that same gray and adding some of the bristle, bristle, bristle texture to the brush. Holy cow. And then some black outlines on the little wire 
and then also add some more black lines to tone down that gray on the bristles because it was a little bit too much and then add a couple more bristles that are sticking out from the brush because we all know they don't actually stay together like they're supposed to and just add a couple more sticking out the other side and then on the handle the plastic part i'm going to be adding some diluted black around the outside just to shade that in and then adding diluted white up the center so just doing that little bit of color on there is what is going to make the handle look like you can see through it and then i'm going to start and just black out a little bit of the shape of the bottle and the water line so just a little bit just to get an idea of how the shaping is going this is with diluted black paint and you can dilute it either with water which you want to be careful and not do too much of that or you can do dilute it with a mixing medium so then i've also got the water line there and now i'm going to start painting my little goby so i'm going to begin with a layer of white paint over my entire little fishy if he had translucent fins i would have not i would have waited and painted those or i would have covered them with paint in the beginning and then added them on top but since his fins are pretty much a solid color i want to make sure he's got a nice white background before i start painting him his tail is pink with some burgundy stripes just like that and then i'm also going to be doing his other fins and those i'm going to start with red and then add a really dark blue at the base just like that so red with the blue blending that up just a little bit and also on his back this mandarin goby is so adorable i took his photo this is actually painting from one of my pictures i have recently been carrying a camera with me all over the place everywhere i go and trying to build a database of photos that i can paint from instead of getting them off the internet it's much more personal for me and so i was really excited to have this gorgeous picture of a mandarin goby to paint from that i took myself so then i'm going to be adding um, a brighter blue on some of his other fins and then i'm going to be adding a little bit of green down on his neck a little bit blending that up his face is much lighter and then on the tips of his fins i am going to be adding some bright blue it's a bright but dark blue just because they've got that really bright little bit there and then they have all of these stripes on them so i'm going to start blocking out the stripes with white paint this is not the color that the stripes actually are you just want to make sure you have them based out so that they are intense in color and they're not going to just sort of blend in with the color beneath them i'm just going to make sure that those are nice and visible all over the place around his eye on his face on all of his fins on his body just like that and then i'm going to be outlining them with a very thin dark blue line and this outlining is extremely time consuming because you do want to make sure that it's thin and even all over the place but it is so important to make sure that he is all of these stripes are really intense on the first polish bottle that i did it was a beta and betas have a definite scale pattern on their back which i think intensifies their fish appearance whereas this guy's patterning and texture comes from his stripes so you want to make sure that you add all of those with the dark blue and also a couple little spots on his on the area around his eye with some more of that dark blue just like a little almost like leopard print on there and just make sure all those and then i'm also going to be filling in a little bit around some of his stripes with some bright orange just not too much just a little bit here and there uh, mostly on his face and on his tail and then over his stripes i'm going to be washing over them with really light blue and I decided that I would do them in a wash instead of doing it with just light blue because I wanted the color to not be so even and flat. And when you use a wash, it's a little less controllable, which makes it a little more random and even, which in this particular circumstance does help and make it look a little more realistic. And then I added some little details and textures with black to really define that. And then with diluted white paint, I'm going to be highlighting my whole entire little fishy here. So I'm gonna make sure that I add some texture to all of his fins and really brighten them up and make them really visible and make him look like he's reflective and catching the light and like his fins have a wavy texture to them because they're so thin that they kind of just billow in the water and highlight his eye and then add just a little bit more a couple of little black lines on his fins to darken them so now i'm going to be doing the water line and i'm going to start with adding some reflections on that with white and then i'm also going to be adding reflections of the colors of my mandarin gobi on the waterline because he will reflect on the waterline as well as some black and also on the very bottom of the glass you'll see some reflections of color there too so i also am going to be adding those as well and on the bottom of the glass because most of these polish bottles the glass actually has like a ring pattern on it the colors are going to reflect in that ring shape so make sure that you do keep those going in that circular pattern but on the surface of the water they're going to reflect all sorts of different ways so don't make those in such perfect lines keep it kind of randomized the other thing when you're doing these reflections try to keep them in line so since a lot of the orange is focused on his face and his tail keep those on the edges and in the middle he's a lot of blue and red so keep the reflections in those areas with a lot of blue and red if i hope that makes sense so just try to keep it so that it's it's reflecting where it would reflect 
And then with diluted white, I'm going to be highlighting the polish bottle in general. So I'm going to start by highlighting the top of it and then carrying that down on the sides. Because this is a squarer bottle, it does have very distinct planes of highlighting. Um, unlike rounder shapes that the highlights kind of are soft and they transfer from one area to the other, this they are more defined and contained to certain areas. So definitely keep that in mind as you're doing this. And so then I'm going to go through after I have the white on there and it's dried, I'm going to start adding some more black shadows around the bottom of the bottle and then within some of those sections. And you can also see through the bottle. So you can, you're not, you're not only highlighting and detailing the front of the bottle, you're also detailing the back of the bottle, which is weird to think about as you're doing it, but also something that is necessary. So then I'm going to be just adding some full strength, black, dark reflections on the bottle. So anywhere that it, depending, I, once again, this is from my own photo of a polish bottle that I have. It's just, I looked at the polish bottle and see where and how things reflected and just repeated it onto the painting. And then I'm going to be adding the white reflections on the bottle, the same thing, exactly the way it reflected on my bottle. And because even though it is square, the lines aren't sharp. They're not like pointy. They do round slightly. So do that as well. So now for the cap of the bottle, I'm going to be adding first a layer of gray. Well, all three of these paintings have chrome lids because they are definitely the most interesting to me instead of just the black one. So I'm just going to start that out with a layer of gray, but then all within that lid, just keep adding shapes and textures and colors. And because I do want to keep this somewhat uniform, I did repeat a lot of the colors that I used on my fish. So on this polished lid, I used a lot of blue, red, orange, pink, same colors as I used below. And I also, um, if you did watch the first one, you know that I did this in the first one. I decided I would continue it because I do take I actually use a lot of photos from, I have a camera, but I also take photos occasionally with my phone instead. And the, my phone case has my little Zeta Zebra logo. So if I do take a photo with that of something Chrome, you can see her. So you can also see my phone a little bit. So I decided to include her again. And I did that for all three paintings, just as a little hidden thing in there. So I did add that. And so for this one, the first one, she was on the side. So for this one, she's straight up. I didn't want to keep them all identical. So I first added all my reflections with white and black, and I will add more of those in a moment, but they're all soft diluted colors and paint just so that, because chrome things, everything is distorted. So you do see shapes of items, but a lot of times, unless it's really close, like my phone was, it's not exactly visible what you're looking at. You're looking at all of these distorted shapes and colors and light from a distance and on a chrome polished bottle lid, it gets really distorted and stretched. So for the rest of the shapes, you can pretty much just make them up as you go along, but I would look at a photo for reference so that you do have some base in what you're doing. Um, so then I just went through and add more colors with uh, like I said, pinks and oranges. And I also wanted to do a little bit of the background color in the lid so that it does have some of that reflection look into it. So I also added some of that teal color that I did in the background. And then I'll be adding some more highlights with white and keep adding details to your chrome until you're happy with it. You can keep, pretty much keep working on this probably for hours and hours and hours. I think I spent about three hours on the lid, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, I just keep going until I'm happy with it. And that's the end result. I hope you like this painting. Like I said, I do have prints of it available on my online store, but they are limited edition. So keep that in mind. And as I upload the last video, I will put links to all three of them and the other two in the description box below. So check that out. And please check out my Facebook and Instagram to see more of my art. And I'll see you in my next video. Bye.